In the last few decades, quite a lot of famous Martian meteorites have been actually involved in various studies in order to discover the history of Mars, but to also sort of understand the evolution of the solar system. But all of these meteorites are discovered not on Mars, but right here on planet Earth, and usually somewhere in the place where they're very easy to find. This one right here, as you can see, was found in the snow, and that's usually where we find most of these meteorites. There's a famous NASA program that I've discussed in one of the previous videos that should be in the description that essentially focuses on discovering these meteorites in Antarctica. With this meteorite, ALH84001, being the most famous meteorite discovered in this region. You can learn more about this in that video in the description. And so in the last few decades, approximately 300 various meteorites have been collected from various locations on the planet, but one of them has been the most famous, the one that's been studied the most. And unlike the meteorites discovered in Antarctica, this one was actually found somewhere else. It's the meteorite you see right here, very often referred to as the Black Beauty, more officially known as the Northwest Africa 7034, because it was discovered in Morocco back in 2011. And you can probably guess where. It was discovered in the Sahara Desert, because just like in Antarctica, it's much easier to see these black rocks compared to some of the other locations that are filled with rocks. And so today, our focus is this meteorite, and more specifically, its origins. Because this very recent study that you can find in the description below was able to use machine learning and also a very thorough analysis to establish where it actually came from and to physically find the crater that generated this particular meteorite. And its origin story is quite interesting, just as the meteorite itself. But I guess first, what do we know about this? Well, as you can see from this image, this is approximately 320 grams or approximately 11 ounces in weight, and it's technically two different pieces, with one piece larger than the other. This rock was sawed in half for scientific purposes. And this rock is also the most important Martian meteorite we have right now, because it seems to be the most ancient of them all. It seems to have been formed on Mars approximately 4.4 billion years ago. That's according to some of the studies that were able to find signs of ancient water based on the minerals discovered in this rock. But even though this is 4.4 billion years old, it was also heated a little bit more recently during the Amazonian period. The period that most likely had some liquid water on the surface, but not as much as before. On top of this, this is the only sample we have from Mars that seems to represent what's known as the volcanic breccia, also known as brecciated shergatite. What this means is that it contains a lot of these chunks of other material that have been cemented into the rock through a lot of volcanic activity in the past. But more intriguingly, this is also the meteorite with the most water present on the inside, or at least signs of water. And even though it's a Martian shergatite meteorite, it seems to be also extremely different from every other meteorite we've discovered so far. It seems to form its own group. Sometimes it's referred to as the basaltic breccia, which makes this the most exciting rock ever discovered coming from the red planet. But it's really the signs of a lot of water discovered in this meteorite that make it particularly interesting. Because in this case, it's believed that all of this water was from the ancient Martian oceans that were very likely still present when the volcanic rock that created this meteorite started to interact with the liquid water on the surface. And then, sometime later, some kind of a meteorite crashed on the surface of the red planet that very likely resembled the planet Earth back then, at least in terms of the liquid oceans, and all of this first of all resulted in some kind of a crater, but also released a lot of the rocks that then ended up going across the solar system and eventually crashing on various planets. At least that's the story for a typical Martian meteorite. The Black Beauty, though, seems to have a slightly different story. This time, the scientists behind the study were able to do a very thorough chemical and geographic analysis, pinpointing what happened to this meteorite, with one super intriguing discovery suggesting that there is an unusual similarity between the ancient crust on Mars approximately 4.5 billion years ago and present planet Earth, at least in terms of the chemical composition. And by using the chemical composition and comparing it to the known sites on Mars, they were able to work out several regions where they think this particular rock could have come from. But because there are so many different craters on Mars, and because these craters have stayed here for billions of years, it is obviously a little bit challenging to work out the exact crater all of this came from. And so in this case, the study relied on the calculations from the powerful Posse Supercomputing Research Center, a powerful Australian supercomputer. In this case, the computer's purpose was to analyze approximately 90 million various craters 
specifically analyzing their size and their spatial distribution. And since the age and the chemical composition in this case were already known from previous studies, it became possible to narrow all of this down to 19 various candidates. Although in this case, the magnetic field intensity was also used, along with the presence of elements like potassium, in order to determine the exact location. In the process, the scientists were also able to create this very unusual and somewhat eerie map of the 90 million different craters, with the actual origin being right here. Now, what exactly is this and what does it look like? And so, as I mentioned, the origin story here is a little bit unusual, and in this case, it involves two separate asteroids colliding with Mars, creating two separate explosive events. The first event happened approximately one and a half billion years ago and created this relatively large crater that the scientists named Kujirt Crater. This is located in the southern hemisphere of Mars. It's approximately 40 kilometers across, and it's named after a district in Mongolia. And so roughly around one and a half billion years ago, a relatively large asteroid, very likely at least a kilometer across, created a huge explosion on the surface of Mars, which released a lot of material. Some of this material ended up escaping Mars and very likely ended up landing on other planets or possibly still orbits the solar system. But some rocks, such as this one, landed a few kilometers away as a debris from this explosion. This is exactly what happened to Black Beauty. It landed in a location roughly around 30 kilometers away, and it stayed there for a very long time, just lying on the surface, most likely not disturbed by much. But then, approximately 5 to 10 million years ago, another rock collided, creating a much smaller crater. The crater that you see right here and that the team behind the paper named Karatha, after an Australian region where some of the Earth's oldest rocks can also be found as well. And it's after this second event that finally that rock, known as Black Beauty, got ejected from Mars and stayed in the solar system orbiting between Mars and planet Earth for approximately 5 to 10 million years very likely landing on our planet in the last few hundreds of years. But the thing is, this rock also contains clear signs of crystals, zircon crystals, which are also known as the shock crystals, which means that there was another collision, a very powerful asteroid collision, that affected this rock four and a half billion years ago as well. Which implies that before this rock landed on planet Earth, it went through three separate asteroid collisions, which affected this rock both chemically and, of course, morphologically making this the most unique, most interesting, and most unusual meteorite we've ever found coming from the Red Planet. But because of this new study and the ability of the scientists to analyze pretty much everything about the rock, along with finding the exact location where it came from, this can now be applied to so many other meteorites, or possibly even used to analyze Mars in some other way, discovering other locations where we think things might have existed here. So it's a pretty important study and a pretty important discovery. But I guess until future studies or until more discoveries, check out some of the previous videos on this topic, especially videos about other meteorites, should be right there or in the description below. And subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.